last week we talked about how Into the Radius 2 is going to have a completely new storyline, next level graphics, and we're getting multiplayer. But this week, I'm going to be talking to you guys about Into the Radius 2's world structure. As we are all very familiar with, Into the Radius 1 is separated into different locations. And we can explore these different locations using these specific paths that the developers have put in various places throughout the radius. Contrary to my speculation in the last video, Into the Radius 2 isn't actually going to be a complete open world. They're going to be using pretty much the same world structure as Into the Radius 1. So different locations are going to be split up. And in order to travel to them, you will need to use designated paths. I'm a little sad that the developers aren't actually going to be making Into the Radius 2 as one giant open world, but that's honestly kind of okay because even though they aren't making it a giant open world, they had some pretty exciting news with regards to the sizes of the locations that are going to be in Into the Radius 2. But first up, let me tell you about all of the different areas that we're going to be able to explore in Into the Radius 2. There are three categories. First is general location, second is satellite, and third is special locations. General locations are going to be pretty massive in Into the Radius 2. Apparently bigger than any of the locations in Into the Radius 1 2.0 version, but not as big as the one massive map that was in Into the Radius 1.0. And in these general locations, you guys know exactly what to do. All right, boys, this is where you're going to kill enemies. All right, you're going to hunt artifacts, complete missions, and especially smoke cigarettes. Next up is satellite locations. These locations are definitely smaller than general locations, but they will often have some kind of relevance as it pertains to the story of the game or a new mechanic that the player is expected to use. Or, as the developers so cryptically say, special conditions. Special conditions could literally mean so many different things. So comment what you guys think. The developers meant when they said special conditions in satellite locations. Do they mean stuff like this? These are kind of special conditions. <laughs> Anyways, satellite areas. After you have extracted whatever wisdom that you're supposed to extract from these satellite locations, it will basically just revert to adopting a general location's characteristics, where basically you will just kill enemies, look for artifacts, and occasionally complete missions in those areas. The third kind of area in Into the Radius 2 is going to be something called a special location. These locations are going to be smaller, but they're usually going to have a pretty important role in the game. A good example of one of these locations in Into the Radius 1 is the base. All right, this is where we come, chill out, smoke cigarettes, send a few down the range, and just party, man. Generally have a good time here. Dude, I might just be tripping balls right now, but it looks like when you spin in the game, the ash on the end of your cigarette like wiggles. See that? Or am I just... Yeah, I have no clue. I think maybe I'm tripping balls right now. <laughs> we'll see in the recording. I don't know if this is a stretch, but if we are saying that the base has a unique role and this qualifies it as a special location, then... Aren't those little safe houses out in the radius that we can go to in the middle of the night to sleep on an actual bed? Probably considered special locations, or is that a stretch? Because if that's considered a special location, my mind naturally wanders, are we going to have safe houses as special locations in Into the Radius 2, or are we going to be getting the sleeping bag back? And if we did get the sleeping bag back in exchange for these safe houses across the radius, what are going to be the new special locations if we have a sleeping bag that we can use anywhere we go and safe houses are pretty much useless now? What kind of weird, special, cool locations are going to be put in the place of those safe houses? And remember, this is all speculation. The developers did not say that the sleeping bag was coming back into the radius too. But hey, I mean, since we're on the topic of Into the Radius 1 game mechanics that we want Into the Radius 2, I'm just saying that I would not at all be angry if I were to be struck down by lightning in Into the Radius 2. That's all I'm saying. But anyways, back to talking about locations. These locations are going to be accessed and progressed through in a very similar way to how they were in Into the Radius 1. Each new location will come with a slight increase in difficulty, and locations that you've already progressed through are going to follow the same path as the player's progression. So things are going to continue to stay interesting, even as you reach those higher levels. Bro, I'm stuck in this truck bed. 
No. And now we have some extremely exciting news, boys. I've been waiting for this one for a while. We are finally going to be getting a jumping mechanic in Into the Radius 2. And not only that, we are also going to be getting improvements to climbing. And the developers did say that this would bring some more variety to the gameplay of Into the Radius 2. Okay, now picture this, boys. You are walking through a super dense and lush forest. Extremely creepy, very atmospheric. You're on a bridge much much more broken down and old than this one dude and in the middle of the bridge there's a massive broken gap that you need to leap over in order to progress through the game and underneath you there isn't going to just be this regular water there's going to be that red bloody water that we all know and love with those creepy little arms reaching up trying to grab you and pull you into the water and in my mind that would be a insane little tutorial to have in Into the Radius 2 to display the jumping mechanic for explorers. If I'm being honest, dude, having those little arms trying to grab me and pull me in <laughs> under a bridge, that is a huge incentive for me to really get that jumping mechanic down. But other than the addition of jumping, all of the other movement mechanics are going to remain pretty much the exact same. We're still going to be able to crouch, sprint, walk, and climb. And since we have an additional movement mechanic coming to Into the Radius 2, the developers are revising the location design for Into the Radius 2 to incorporate more areas where you need to crouch, jump, or climb in order to progress to the next area. Apparently these areas are going to be extremely easy to spot and they're going to be very visually distinct. And actually the developers said that Into the Radius 2 is going to have locations that are a lot more diverse with more variety and they're all going to be very visually distinct from each other. So basically when Into the Radius 2 comes out into early access, we're going to have one general location, one satellite location, and then we are also going to have the home base and the different tutorial areas. However, all of these areas are going to be subject to change during the development of Into the Radius 2 in early access. But I have one more thing to talk about, and it's kind of a big one. It just might be me speculating again, though. You may have noticed that the developers named one of these types of locations in Into the Radius 2 a satellite location. Now, that could be very specific and mean that there's literally a satellite there, in which case satellites can be used in so many different ways when it comes to survival. These satellite locations could possibly give explorers information and guides on how to deal with maybe specific entities or weather conditions that are in that location. Or maybe you can use these satellites for emergency communications to the UNPSC and even maybe navigating throughout into the radius too. I feel like there are so many different things that you could do with these satellite locations that would be super interesting and add to the gameplay a ton. I saw somebody in the last video talking about how it would be cool if Explorer 61 was like a ghost that followed you around and gave you advice. Let's just say that maybe these satellite locations do involve you getting some kind of audio guide to help you with completing a mission. Would it not be absolutely insane if the person who was tasked with recording these guides for the UNPSC was Explorer 61? I think that would be amazing. And dude, this is a big shot in the dark, but hey, into the radius developers, if you're watching this and you need a voice actor to voice Explorer 61, I'm your guy, all right? <laughs> I'm right here, baby. I am 100% down for that. <laughs> Bro, what is this little girl just doing standing here in the corner of this stairway? <laughs> little rascals running around here. Well, boys, that is the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. We are getting extremely close to 10K, which is freaking insane, dude. Have an amazing weekend, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye!